Knowing when your lupus is controlled and when it's not, it's not always as easy as you'd think it's for the doctor or the person actually living with it. There are some clues, however, that if you pay attention to them, you can become an expert in your own lupus. Some of these I learned in training, but one in particular I've learned from my 15 plus years of experience taking care of those with lupus. Understanding these clues will help you make decisions about treatments, whether to start or stop, and give you more control. So let's get started. You still have a high DSDNA antibody or low C3, C4 levels in your blood work. When you have lupus, getting regular blood tests becomes a part of life. So much so that you can easily assume that the only thing that matters are the blood test results. Rheumatologists typically see those with lupus every one to three months and we will order blood tests each time. <laughs> There's a reason. In lupus, we are checking for things like anemia or kidney problems, and we are also checking two immune system markers that are associated with lupus activity. The anti-DSDNA antibody, or the anti-double-stranded DNA antibody, and complements C3 and C4. I did two videos on each of these tests if you really wanted to do a deep dive, and I'll put the links in the description box. But for simplicity, an elevated or positive anti-double strand DNA antibody and low C3 and C4 levels are both associated with active lupus. Of course, because this is rheumatology, there are a ton of caveats and exceptions to this, but it's a good rule of thumb. Every lupus patient is different, but this rule won't be true for everyone. It can take some time of tracking to confirm, are you someone whose DSDNA and C3, C4 go up and down with your lupus, or are your labs always stone cold normal despite feeling like crud and having lots of inflammation? We should be careful not to put too much emphasis on these labs, but correlating how you feel with your lab results will teach you a lot about your own personal lupus. You are still needing prednisone or NSAIDs every day. This is very common. Someone can be feeling great, but with a little digging, you find out they're still taking ibuprofen four times a day or reaching for that five milligrams of prednisone. Prednisone and NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen are potent anti-inflammatories and are tools we reach for when we have active inflammation but they come with their own problems and should not be taken all day, every day. They are best used for a finite period of time to get someone's inflammation under control. If you find that you are still reaching for them on the regular, you need to ask yourself why. What is the symptom that bothers you the most and the reason that you take it? When I find that someone who looks great is actually still reaching for those medications regularly, it's a clue to me that my lupus specific medications aren't doing their job. We use lupus specific immune system targeted medications to get at the specific lupus related problem that then leads to decreased inflammation. When these lupus specific meds are working, we shouldn't need as much anti-inflammatory band-aids because we are cutting the problem off at the source. If someone is still reaching for these meds, it's a good time to ask what's going on. Maybe the reason you reach for them actually has nothing to do with lupus, or maybe it's a sign that the lupus specific medicine needs to be adjusted. You can't miss one dose or even take a dose late without inviting a flare. As a doctor, I would never advocate for missing a dose or forgetting your medication. However, as a human alive in this crazy modern world, I also understand that, hey, stuff happens. In the real world, we can sometimes forget or go a few days in between refills because our doctor will get them sent in. When your lupus is in remission, you can usually go without a dose or two without setting the house on fire. Again, this is not an invitation to test the waters and stop everything. But yes, lupus in remission is usually strong enough to miss a dose or two. If you find that missing just one dose or even taking the dose one to two hours late is pushing your limits and you feel like your pain, your swelling or inflammation are coming back, then it's an important sign we need to pay attention to. Of course, 
which medication we are talking about makes a difference as each med has their own quirks. But generally speaking, being so reliant on the medication is a sign that your inflammation hasn't calmed down yet. Your blood pressure is high. Blood pressure can be a marker of many things, but high among them is stress, inflammation, or kidney issues, all of which we need to be paying extra attention to in lupus. In rheumatology offices, just like most doctor's offices, we check everyone's blood pressure and we particularly pay attention when we know a lupus patient is also dealing with lupus in the kidneys. But even if that isn't you, you should pay attention if your blood pressure is high or even just on the high side. Although getting your blood pressure checked at your doctor's office is always a good first step, can be misleading as many of us have higher than usual pressures when at the doctor's office. It's called white coat hypertension and trust me, it's a thing. If your blood pressure is very high, then it's unlikely to only be from white coat anxiety but if it's just always on the quote unquote high side, it may be a good reminder that you need to be keeping track of it at home. Get yourself a home blood pressure cuff and measure it daily for a week to see what you're really running when you're relaxed at home. This will give you a much more realistic picture of what your blood pressure really is. Not only can having high blood pressure be a sign of active lupus, but it's really just good practice. You know, lupus is associated with a high risk of cardiovascular disease, which means we wanna be on top of every other risk factor, which includes blood pressure. You are still not engaging in your life. You aren't hanging out with friends or family and you aren't participating in social events. You're hiding. Lupus is life-changing. There's just no way around it. It's scary and defeating and takes so much energy, energy we don't necessarily have to figure out how to maneuver through doctor's appointments and blood tests and medications and now all the new symptoms that we have to deal with. One of the key elements to getting back control over your health and your lupus is getting back to a life. After years of caring for those with lupus, I have found that the biggest tell that someone is truly doing well and thriving is that they are getting back, or really, building a new life. A new life that includes lupus. Hiding away can be a sign that we aren't feeling great, either from lupus, new medications, or from the grief of the loss of our pre-lupus life. We can also have a lot of fear about what a new life with lupus is gonna look like. Will we be accepted? How can we learn to not push ourselves too much? Isolating gets in the way of true remission. I can throw all kinds of medications at lupus to get your blood work right, to decrease your inflammation, but real remission isn't just about getting your numbers right, it's about living your life. So I love bringing up questions for you to think about and to bring up at your next doctor's visit. Do you know what your anti-double strand DNA antibody and complement levels are? The first step is tracking what your numbers are. You can then correlate what your numbers are with how you're feeling. How often are you taking anti-inflammatories, either NSAIDs or prednisone, and be on it? Needing these every now and then is totally par for the course and fine, but if you are reaching for them on a daily or even multiple times a day, add it to your list to talk about with your doctor. What is your blood pressure and do you have any readings from home? Get yourself a home blood pressure cuff and for one week, check your blood pressure every day. Try it different times of the day. That will give you the best idea of what you're running. Take a moment to reflect. Are you holding back from engaging with friends and family? And if so, why? Whatever your answer is, it's okay. There's absolutely no judgment. But remember, what's the point of getting in remission if you still aren't living your life? The dance you and your rheumatologist are constantly doing with lupus is figuring out when good enough is enough and when to keep pushing. I have been on both sides of this dance. Sometimes my patient's happy with where they are and I'm the one gently reminding them that we need to keep tweaking. And sometimes it's the other way around. There is no right or wrong here. It's about learning your own flavor of lupus, understanding the clues so that you can then interpret them correctly and then make the best health decision for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you got something out of it, I'd appreciate it if you liked, shared, and subscribed. It really helps us get in front of more eyeballs so that more people can get the information they need to better understand their lupus. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.